Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, welcome back to another episode of Books and Buds, where we discuss two of the greatest things on planet Earth, books and buds. Today we're going to be discussing this amazing book. I listen to it on audio because I work a lot in the gardens and I don't have time to read, so listening to books has become one of my favorite things to do. The book is titled The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. Now, I usually don't swear in these videos, but I don't have a choice in this one, so kindly bear with me, folks. I'll do my best to limit my swearing to just the title. Now, I think it's a good idea to mention this very quick quote. And now, notice, sometimes it's best not to give a fuck, because I happen to use a pair of clean underwear as my bookmark for today's show. That's how little I care. You guys uh, either love me or you hate me, and uh, I want you to love me, but if you hate me, what am I going to do? It was convenient to just grab it and throw it in this page, the market. On to the quote, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to write, you can. Fear stops most people from writing, not lack of talent. Whatever that is. And that's basically it. I mean, there's a lot of people out there in, in, in the world that are going to crap all over you for whatever your passions may be. Um, I remember... When I first got into the cannabis industry, my parents, of all people, weren't incredibly supportive of it. It's, it's terrible, it's a narcotic, it's, it's, it's illegal. Guys, it's medicinally legal, and not to mention they're in the process of making it legal nationwide. Don't worry about it. This stuff is fine. It's better for you than alcohol. You, you're better off smoking a, a joint than you are a cigarette. Just, just calm down and relax. And... Fortunately, not caring about the opinions of others too much, I've become pretty pretty well off, uh, both in, in uh, monetarily, mentally. Uh, I have more free time than I did in some of my past jobs working for other people. I still work a lot, hence why I have to listen to audiobooks, do a lot of deliveries, and, and I have to spend a lot of time in the garden. But as far as I'm concerned, that's not work. I do what I want. I don't have a boss. And that would not be the outcome had I listened to some of my friends and some of my family members. So, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Let's dive right into it. It's by this gentleman named Mark Manson. And he, he I identified with him so much. It was, like, it was like having a drink with one of my pals. Because the guy was, wasn't really using all this purple prose or anything like that. He was just writing it as a general... general general conversation to be having with one of his pals, and I felt like one of his pals listening to it. Uh, you know, like kind of smoking a joint with, with, with my business partner Chris or something like that. We talk about this stuff all the time. Not to mention, a lot of the stuff he went through in the book resonated with me. He got caught with cannabis when he was a young kid in high school. I got caught with cannabis in high school. Most of my friends did. And he listened to all the same music I did. He was talking about wearing a Pantera shirt and in the book, he discusses one of the one of the things that stuck out to me the most was he discusses the lead singer of Megadeth. His name is Dave Mustaine. He started off. He was one of the co one of the founding members of the group Metallica. When Metallica kicked him out, he decided he was going to form another group and be the best metal group of all time. Well, he ended up selling 25 million plus albums. He sells out to he sells out to large audiences all the time. He's been in the business for over thirty years. He's he's rocking and rolling. He's kicking some ass. He's taking some names. However, Metallica went on to sell one hundred and eighty million records. And in an interview, Dave Mustaine admitted that he doesn't feel good about that. He he just wants to be the best so bad. He wants to outdo his former bandmates so bad that he's he's unable to find happiness. And I believe he's found happiness now. He's he's. Uh, since those days, he's made amends with his former bandmates, and they even tour together sometimes, so that's really nice. Then Mark Manson makes a, a comparison. Pete Best, he's probably one of the most tragic cases in rock and roll. He was one of the, he was the former drummer of the Beatles. They kicked him out. There's tons of rumors. Uh, they kicked him out because what the main, main media, mainstream media will tell you, like I, I heard it on the, the uh, Howard Stern show, that it was because Pete Best was the most good-looking guy and all the girls loved him. So they needed to kick him out, and that's why they got ugly Ringo Starr in instead. But in a later interview, I heard from Paul McCartney himself that Pete Best just called out sick one day, 
They got uh, Ringo Starr to fill in on the drums, and they just were blown away by his talent, and they thought he was a better fit for the band. So whatever the reason is, that doesn't really matter. What matters is how Pete best handled it. Now, of course, he was upset at first, but then he started focusing on the things that he found enjoyment in, and he wasn't enjoying the fact that his former bandmates kicked him out. He was enjoying the fact that he discovered he enjoyed his wife. He enjoyed his family. And now he's the only one of all the Beatles that has been to the, married to the same woman for over 50 years. The rest of them have been in and out of marriages, and it's been, it's been quite tragic for all of them. So of all of them, he might have the best life of all of them. It's quite simple. It's, it's, it's sweet. And I actually saw him on an episode of Tiny Houses, and he just lives simply, and he seems to be very at peace. When I see interviews with Paul McCartney or Ringo Starr, the other two surviving members, I just don't see them the same way. They seem kind of stressed, bored with life, you know? And at that level, I can see I can see it being very difficult to find peace in this world. Another thing I loved about this book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson, was he opened right up with Charles Bukowski. If you're not familiar with Charles Bukowski, as a writer, I, I'm very familiar with him. He's a very crass writer. He died a while ago, and on his, on his gravestone, it even says, Don't try. Now, he had tried, I think it wasn't until his late 40s or early 50s before he finally got picked up by a small publisher. They decided to give him a chance, and he ended up doing really well for himself. He sold a couple, maybe two or three million copies of his books, and he became a very well-known poet. Again, it's very crass, but he stuck to what he likes. He just kept writing nasty, kind of kind of off-the-wall poetry and prose, and there was an audience for it. And he never would have found that audience if he cared. You know, he he never switched who he was. He's like, this is what I am, this is who I am, and I'm going to keep going until I get it. He got it. He got it. So, I also have some examples of my own life. I, I you know, beyond the whole cannabis industry, I just, I enjoy writing so much. I really do. And I've, I've been asked by an ex-girlfriend, well, hey, you don't get paid for it. Why do you keep writing? I was like, well, because I have a dream. Someday I'd like to get paid for this, but right now, it's not going to happen until people start reading my work and believing in me enough to maybe sign me. I'm hoping for an agent. I think that'd be wonderful. But it worked. It worked because right now I got signed to a small publishing house. They, the, the story behind me, how I got picked up, was because I was involved in this writer's group on Facebook. I'm still involved with them. And they hooked up with a very small publisher to release an anthology every year. Well, I submitted to it. Lo and behold, they really liked my work. And as a matter of fact, the editor for the, the chief editor, editor-in-chief of the publishing house, said that my story was the best of all of them. And she told me this because it almost didn't get accepted for some legal reasons. But anyways, the legal reasons uh, were disputed, and they were able to use my, my work, and they were very happy, and they told me it was because my story was the best. So I said, okay, all right, that's great. They own a publishing house. They like my work, so that means this might be my in. Now, by that point, I already had like six, seven novels written that I just couldn't seem to get published anywhere. So I took a chance. I gave him one of my earlier ones, not one of my best ones, but it was a story I believed in, and I sent it to them. And I sent it to them requesting that the administrator of the group let me use her as a reference, and she did. And then, it, lo and behold, I was signed. I'm a signed writer, guys. I'm a professional novelist. And just being able to say that fills my heart with joy. But if I was worried about getting paid, and, you know, I, I'm not going to do this because I could be doing this for another 10 years and not receive a dime. Like, it doesn't work like that. You go and get a job if you want to make an immediate dime. You want to run a business, you can expect on average not to make any money for two years. Actually, you can expect to take a loss for an average of two years when you start your own small business. Those are just the facts. But if you don't give a fuck about other people's opinions and you just keep going and keep driving and keep driving, you're going to get there. So yeah, sometimes we review, um, we review positive books on this channel too, everybody. Now, we're going to keep this one short. I see that I got 9 minutes and 30 seconds into this video. I'm going to try to end it with just under 10 minutes left. So, if you like this episode, if you like this channel, please subscribe. Tell your friends. Share this video. Comment below if you think I suck. Also, the, the Love Askew box set available for pre-order right now through Rhetoric Askew is available uh, on Amazon. I'll leave a link below. Nook, 
Kobo, I'm going to be over 10 minutes, whatever. Uh, I'll leave a link for all of those outlets down below. It's only 99 cents for uh, 25 or 26 no uh, novel novellas and uh, novelettes. Mine is a novella. So that's less than 5 cents a book, and I think you'd be doing yourself a great disservice by not clicking on that link below and purchasing yourself a copy today. It'll be out in December, and hey, what a great time to be reading a big box set full of romance novels when it's freezing outside and you don't want to leave the house. So everybody, you could have tuned into any book review channel on the internet. For some reason, you popped into mine, and I love the hell out of you for it. Peace.